everyone. So this section is on anaerobic cellular respiration, uh, many times referred to as fermentation. So we're going to talk about two types of fermentation today. Uh, so in previous sections, we have gone over aerobic cellular respiration. So that's respiration that uh, is performed in the presence of oxygen. What we do uh, the majority of the time uh, is take in oxygen and use that oxygen in the last stage of cell respiration to convert uh, the food, the energy stored in food, uh, to a more usable cellular form of energy known as ATP. Uh, so that's normal aerobic cellular respiration. Today we're going to talk about an alternative form of cell respiration, an alternative form of making uh, energy in the form of ATP. And there are other organisms out there in this world. Uh, that live in environments that are, that, that are not exposed to oxygen. So they've evolved a system where you can produce ATP, albeit in small amounts, uh, in the absence of oxygen. So this is why we're talking about um, and, so that's without um, aerobic, meaning oxygen um, taking in. Uh, so it's a, a process of cell respiration where you can produce ATP with, without the presence of oxygen. Okay. So just looking at some examples of this, well, um, if you're thinking about the process of normal cellular respiration, you're thinking, uh, you know, there's three parts, glycolysis, citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle, however you want to remember it, and that last part, oxidative phosphorylation, what we call the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. Okay, so you know that the last part, the ETC, uh, directly requires oxygen, and because of that, the Krebs cycle um, also requires oxygen. So if you're thinking glycolysis is, is the only energy producing part of cell respiration uh, that does not directly require oxygen. So we're going to be working in these organisms uh, with glycolysis pathways. So it's a modified glycolysis. Uh, so all of these organisms require some sort of fuel uh, source, uh, a six carbon containing sugar uh, in this case, glucose to be broken down uh, in the process of glycolysis. So we're going to, just like we learned in the normal process, we're going to go from like uh, glucose to uh, pyruvic acid. You're still going to have empty electron carriers, NAD+, be converted to NADH by taking on two electrons. That's still going to happen. You're also going to make that little bit of ATP. Remember, we net two ATPs in glycolysis. So you're still going to keep netting that small amount of ATP. So that process is the same. So you have to think these organisms are only making two ATPs at a time, but for the most part they're microscopic. So we're going to talk about some examples of that. So they're, uh, you know, very simple uh, you know, single cell organisms. So AT two ATP at a time is is uh, is going to be sufficient for them. They're going to need a, a boatload of glucose though to do that. Uh, so let's talk about this process. Okay. So uh, in the first type of fermentation that we're going to discuss. This is uh, lactic acid fermentation, okay? Uh, the organisms that use this, um, many bacteria that are buried in soil or that are found in very still waters uh, can do this. Uh, we'll talk about that specifically in a minute. And believe it or not, some of our cells, uh, when we do explosive activities, activities which outpace our ability to take in oxygen, such as sprinting uh, here, uh, you're going to see lactic acid fermentation occurring in these cells, so I'm referring to muscle cells. Okay, good. Uh, so we get to pyruvic acid here, and then we arrive at a problem in this biochemical pathway. What we see here is that we've made a lot of full electron carriers, a lot of NADHs. Okay, so we have a lot of these, but if you're thinking uh, if you're comparing anaerobic and aerobic cellular respiration, you're, you're remembering that these NADHs normally go to the ETC and they're drawn about, uh, the electrons are drawn about through that uh, chain of protein carriers by oxygen. But remember, if we're working in anaerobic conditions, there is no oxygen. So the ETC is out, which means there's nowhere for these NADHs to go. Okay, so that's a problem. In order for glycolysis to occur, you need to keep regenerating NAD pluses, but we cannot regenerate them from NADH if there's nowhere for NADH to go. 
Uh, okay, so here's what has evolved. Here's here's the the the, the difference in this pathway. Uh, essentially, what you need is you need an outlet for these NADH molecules to deposit their electrons. So you need somewhere for elect uh, the electrons um, on NADH to go. And what happens is that these electrons are basically added back to pyruvic acid, okay, which allows NADH to go back to NAD+. This uh, adding of electrons basically changes pyruvic acid uh, to this new molecule, lactic acid. Okay, um, so let's talk about what that, that means in real life. Uh, organisms that do this, uh, like bacteria, you may have heard of... Uh, lactobacillus um, types of bacteria uh, as shown here. This is a, a bacterium which uh, can do this process as in, in, in the process of doing that creates a lot of lactic acid. You've seen that in products like one of my personal favorites, yogurt. Um, if you look on the back of any yogurt cup you will see some sort of lactobacillus bacteria and you'd also see lactic acid or lactate um, found there. Uh, this process is also performed in uh, the making of aged cheeses, shown here. Okay, so in the process of, of making this uh, aged cheese, you will you will require uh, this type of bacteria to perform this sort of anaerobic cellular respiration uh, to make that product. And, uh, and also, unfortunately, one of my least favorite uh, sauerkraut and other sort of pickled and fermented dishes like kimchi are also produced in this fashion. In fact, the reason that sauerkraut and kimchi have that sort of pungent sour taste uh, is because of this process. You're creating um, a sour tasting acid, acidic material. Okay, so uh, lactobacillus performs that. You also perform this in muscle cells, especially when you're sprinting. So in, in the case of sprinting, uh, you know, you're, you're performing an activity which is very demanding of ATP. It's so demanding, in fact, that the production of ATP, the amount of ATP needed to do this activity, uh, is very high. It's so high, in fact, that the body cannot get in enough oxygen to perform this process of making ATP uh, aerobically. So you go into an anaerobic situation, so you lack oxygen because you can't breathe enough. You can't breathe fast enough to make it aerobically. So what your body can do is shift into this anaerobic lactic acid fermenting uh, fer fermentation process where you can produce uh, ATP this way, albeit very few, but you can shift into an oxygen-deprived situation where you can continue to make uh, ATP. Of course, that process doesn't last very long. Um, Sprinting is designed to occur only in brief instances, uh, especially in our ancestors, where you know being able to sprint was a matter of life or death. Uh, so you do have that sort of extra gear to uh, produce ATP anaerobically when you're lacking oxygen. Okay, so that's that's the first uh, fermentation process. I want you to know that's a lactic acid fermentation. Let's go to the next one: uh, alcohol fermentation, kind of a fun one. Uh, Okay, so in this process, essentially everything is the same. You still have glycolysis occurring here, as you did with uh, lactic acid fermentation, as you do with normal um, aerobic cellular respiration. You go from glucose to pyruvic acid. You're making two ATPs. You're also making um, several NADHs by uh, adding electrons to NAD+. That's all the same. The difference here... Well, there, are, there are many differences, but the first difference I'm going to talk to you about is that this pyruvic acid has a carbon removed from it. So you can see here that there are three carbons per pyruvic acid molecule. In this process, in addition to adding electrons to it, you're also going to strip a carbon from that molecule. So you can see now that you're left with a two-carbon product. Okay, So in addition to adding electrons to pyruvic acid, you're also going to take away this carbon, the carbon is released as carbon dioxide, and you're left with a two-carbon product called ethyl alcohol. This is the alcohol that you find in all sorts of liquors, you find in wine, you find in, in beer. Uh, so it's a two-carbon product that results from stripping away that carbon dioxide. Now this release of a carbon dioxide is also very interesting because when you think to products that are made by alcohol fermentation, such as uh, you know, 
wines here and beer here, uh, there's a natural carbonation that occurs in that process. And for beer, the carbonation that you see, uh, especially when you ferment your own, is uh, carbon dioxide released from this process of going from pyruvic acid to ethyl alcohol. Okay, so you're in the process of making that alcohol. Um, the organism that does this, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, it can break off that carbon dioxide, releases it, it's found as natural carbonation. Ethyl alcohol is actually toxic for that organism, so the or or organism basically secretes the, the alcohol as well. And, and if you're making beer or wine, that's the, that's the alcohol content. Okay, so uh, the microorganism that does this, that we'll refer to, is um, it's a yeast. So yeast is a microscopic fungi. Um, this particular yeast, it, you know, it doesn't matter. It's budding yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, but, uh, you know, it's yeast. It, it, you can call it baker's yeast or budding yeast, whatever. Um, it's used in a lot of uh, foods that we eat, um, including bread. So when you bake bread, you probably, if you've made this yourself or if, you know, you've heard of people making it, you always have to add yeast. Okay, so the yeast that you add starts to perform alcohol fermentation. Uh, it starts to produce carbon dioxide, which is actually what makes the bread rise, right? So um, CO2 here is what contributes to this bread rising. And then when you bake the bread, you'll notice in the slices of the bread there are various holes in it, and that is from the trapped carbon dioxide bubbles. Um, and obviously, they, they um, when they bake, they leave those holes. OK. so. Um, I mean, this yeast is actually, a lot of these organisms are actually really interesting. We didn't go into this but in, in too much detail, but they can perform aerobic cellular respiration or anaerobic cellular respiration based on the conditions. So this, uh, this yeast actually can perform normal cellular respiration when in the presence of oxygen. But if it is not in the presence of oxygen, it slips over into that anaerobic cellular respiration, the alcohol fermentation process. Okay, so uh, those are the two main differences between uh, the two types of fermentation. So as a compare and contrast not only to the types of fermentation, but also comparing and contrasting aerobic cellular respiration and anaerobic cellular respiration. Uh, I hope that helps. See you soon.